All right, it's going to be an I'm right for the ages tonight. Why? Well, we're going to talk about this arraignment that happened today. We're going to discuss culture war issues, and we have the greatest light in the mood we've ever done. All that's coming up on I'm Right. Trump got arraigned today. You know it. It's been all over everything. TV, radio, it's all over every every single news site. Trump got arraigned today in D.C. Everyone on the right is crying and gnashing their teeth. Everybody on the left, they're all celebrating today. But let's, let's have a discussion about something. Because this is about Trump, and it's also about us and our future. You and me, future. Did you ever see... You ever see one of those old Looney Tunes cartoons? And, and this is the scenario in the cartoon. They did this a bunch of different ways, but I used to watch Looney Tunes when I was a kid. And you'd have a chicken. You'd have a chicken sitting there, and he's walking around talking and joking, and he would come across a coyote or a wolf. And the chicken would just start talking to the coyote, and the coyote's talking back, and they're just talking but then you see the coyote start to daydream and he looks at the chicken and all of a sudden he pictures this piece of fried chicken that he can eat. As he's looking at the chicken a totally different way than the chicken's looking at him. And the chicken doesn't know it. You remember those scenes? That's a lot of the right in this country. A lot of America's right. They're the chicken. Sitting there having a conversation with the coyote or the wolf, and they just don't fully grasp how the coyote thinks, what he's thinking, what his plans are. You see, the communist, you don't have to understand him fully. It's probably best if you don't understand him fully. But you do have to understand this. He's really, really, really dead serious about how he thinks of you. And he thinks you're evil. What, what you think of him, set that aside. We can deal with that another time. He believes you are the height of evil. And he believes since you're the height of evil, anything he does to stop you, anything he does, it's all justified. It all makes him the good guy because he's the one stopping evil. And people on the right, they don't like to think about other people in that way. And they don't look at other people in that way. Seems wrong. Seems yucky, right? But because we don't look at other people in that way, we convince ourselves that's not how they're looking at us. I'm going to play you a little video clip right now. Michael Fanone was one of these scumbag Capitol Police officers that lied afterwards, and he's just been lying. He's an obviously Democrat operative, but that's not important. That's not important. And Michael Fanone went on CNN, and he voiced something. And before I play it for you, I just I want to I want to caution you with this. You know how I tell you stay out of the blue areas, stay out of the big cities, and if you have to go to those cities for work or whatnot, keep your head down and your mouth shut. No political activity in these places. And I'll get people, they'll yell back at me. People from the right, people from our side. People who will yell back at me, what are you saying? I don't have rights. Jesse, I've got the First Amendment. We got to protest for Trump in D.C. Okay, go protest for Trump in D.C. When you get arrested and thrown in jail, I want you to watch Michael Fanon here. Your jury in D.C. is going to be made up of 12 of these people. When I first learned about the indictment, um, I had a long conversation with a friend of mine, Ryan Riley, and uh, I told him how proud I felt uh, to be an American at that moment, uh, much in the way that I did uh, when I learned that uh, our military had killed Osama bin Laden. Um, I just felt incredibly proud. Trump's indictment made him feel the same way he felt when Osama bin Laden died. They look at you like they look at Trump as if you're Osama bin Laden. Now, let me ask you, if you were to ever sit on a jury and let's say Osama bin Laden was dead or was alive 
And so Osama bin Laden was on trial when you were on that jury. Would you vote to convict Osama bin Laden of really anything, even if the charges were bogus? Of course you would. And that's how that jury of 12 in D.C., New York, L.A., pick your spot, that's how they're going to think when they look at you. And that leads me to something else that's it's, it's confusing people on the right. When Julie Kelly comes on the show and says this, what keeps Donald Trump out of federal prison? Winning. Winning the presidency. That's it. That's the only hope that he has. Because if yes. he wins, of course, he can fire everyone at DOJ. All the cases could go away. Outside of that, I don't see any relief that he can get because it's, it won't it won't happen. They've created this bloodlust on the Democratic Party base to get Donald Trump behind bars. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to do it one way or the other. You will hear, when you talk like that, you will hear people start yelling. And they'll think in their minds somehow that you're cheering for it. Or they'll say things like this. He will prevail. No, Jesse, Trump's going to beat this. And I understand. I understand that people are scared and they're desperate and they're angry. And so you really, you want to hang on to stuff like that. So I get that. But prevail how? In what way? There's no prevailing in a corrupt communist gulag system like the Washington DC court system where Donald Trump was just arraigned today. But I'm not mad at the people who yell about that. I'm really genuinely not. I understand people are desperate and scared. I am, however, mad at the people with platforms and influence on the right who take advantage of those people who say things like that. No, yes, you're right. Trump's gonna win. Trump's got it covered. DC can't beat Trump. We will overcome. That's not properly preparing people for the days we're going into. We have days we're going into that are going to be very hard. They're gonna be hard for you and they're gonna be hard for me. And we're gonna watch things we never thought we'd watch here in the United States of America. Indictments, arrests of, of political opponents, crazy banana republic stuff. And it's going, to be, it's going to be stressful enough just watching it happen. But it's going to be twice as stressful if you've somehow allowed these lying snakes to delude you into believing things that simply aren't true. Trump, Trump is caught up in the system, in a very evil system. And it's wrong, and it's unjust, and it shouldn't be happening. But it is happening. And we are on desperate ground here. So let's not do pie in the sky savior fantasies. Let's focus on what we know. Let's focus on what we can do. That's why I've been screaming about getting some action from the GOP. And let me caution you with one other thing before I get to GOP action. Let me caution you with something. As you, because you love your country, as you watch these people commit unspeakable acts as they're doing right now, it can be very tempting, especially in this online world. Everyone's on their phone, on social media. It can be very, very tempting Start venting your feelings out there a little bit. Especially to that patriotic friend of yours. He's an online friend. Great dude. He was in the Marines, is what he says. And you're very tempted at times when you get angry and desperate to text things like, it's time to take up arms. No more voting. Time to start shooting. You just texted that to an FBI agent and you're going to go to prison. Keep yourself legal at all times, including in your words. These people are dying to throw you in prison legal at all times all right which brings me to the gop so what can we do what can we do well sadly this is what's frustrating i can't do anything you can't do anything to help trump besides pray for him nothing there's nothing you can do to help him there's nothing i can do to help him the only chance we might have is some red state ags indicting and arresting democrats democrats commit crimes lots and lots of crimes why aren't we arresting them? Where's the arrest? How many are there? 27 red state AGs. How many arrests of Democrats, prominent Democrats have we had since Donald Trump started getting indicted and arrested? Uh, zero. Zero. Do we have just a legion of AGs following in the steps of Bill Barr talking about how we won't do a tit for tat? 
those who broke the laws uh, will be held to account. But this cannot be, and it will not be, a tit-for-tat exercise. We are not going to lower the standards just to achieve a result. The only way to stop this vicious cycle, the only way to break away from a dual system of justice is to make sure that we scrupulously apply the single and proper standard of justice for everybody. Yeah, of course, that's not the only way to make it stop it. That doesn't make it stop it at all because the coyote's still looking at you like you're a piece of chicken. You don't make him stop by him admiring your standards. You make it stop by visiting the same things on him he's done to you until he calls a truce and says, hey, guys, let's stop all that. My bad. Let's lay it down. That's the only way to make it stop. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. Just a heads up, red state AGs. We got Chip Roy. Let's hear what his take on all this stuff is. He's a DeSantis backer. So what's his take on all this Donald Trump stuff? We'll get to that in a moment. Before we get to Chip, let's get to Rough Greens. Natural nutritional supplements. You know I'm all about natural supplements for me, for you. I talk about that all the time. I really don't like big pharma crap. I like natural. Well, your dog's a living and breathing thing too. We should be giving them natural things more than we're giving them crap. Rough Greens is a natural supplement. They pour on your dog's food. They'll pour it on your food. You pour it on your food, I guess I should say. And it gives your dog actual nutrition because there's none in his food. Vitamins, minerals, omega oils, probiotics. You get a free bag to start out. All you pay for is the shipping. Roughgreens.com slash jesse is how you do that. Or you can call 833-33-MY-DOG. We'll be back. I really do believe that uh, anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. And anyone who asks someone else to put themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States again. The allegations in this indictment fall flat. It is wrong and incorrect and inaccurate to place blame for what happened on January 6th at the feet of Donald Trump. We will bring accountability. We will end weaponization, and that regards to new leadership at the FBI, DOJ. We're going to take power out of D.C. Uh, we're going to return it to the American people. But one of the things I mentioned in that statement I think is important to point out, you know, the reality is uh, a Republican, a D.C. jury, would indict a ham sandwich and convict a ham sandwich if it was a Republican ham sandwich. That was a little of the... Sampling of the reaction to the indictment stuff. Joining me now, a great congressman from the state of Texas and outspoken DeSantis supporter Chip Roy. Congressman, okay, the indictment's garbage. You're a DeSantis backer in the primary. What say you about all this stuff? Well, first of all, good to be on, Jesse. Yeah, I am a DeSantis backer. He's a good man. I've known him for a long time. He's done a hell of a job in Florida. He's actually leading. People are moving there. He won by a million and a half votes. He won 62% of Hispanic voters. He won 50% of single female voters. He's created a strong economy, gone after Disney. What more do I need to say? Flip side is the president, the former president, President Trump, is the target of a radical left uh, ensconced the Department of Justice. We see it. Anybody with eyes sees it. This uh, indictment, uh, this is crazy, right? I mean, this is a flimsy indictment at best. It's a it's a political indictment uh, based on a claim of fraud uh, when what they're trying to do is just basically go after the president of the United States with a special counsel that's been appointed to give shield and cover to Biden and to um, Merrick Garland for politicizing the Department of Justice. So all those guys are correct, but all of that is noise. It's all noise because the American people are suffering with a terrible economy, with inflation, with wide open borders, inability to create jobs, massive you know, impact of the Inflation Reduction Act, killing your ability to get a car, China's kicking our butt. And here we are going in circles, and what are we gonna do about it? Have hearings, have show hearings? When are we gonna defund some of these tyrannical bureaucrats who are going after us? When are we gonna take the play box, the sandbox away from Alejandro Mayorkas or from Merrick Garland and actually stick it down their throats? What are Republicans waiting for? That's my question. Well. You're there. What are they waiting for? And I asked because of this. I saw already there's this big appropriations thing. So obviously you can speak to coming in September. And of course, you're leading the charge with not enough of our fellow Republicans 
trying to actually get some things accomplished. And September's right around the corner, and this is a big deal, isn't it, Chip? It is a big deal. You know, there's a poll that came out that had us plus nine over President Biden as congressional Republicans in terms of who the American people trust to actually carry the country forward. Now, the fact is we're plus nine because of the speaker's agreement and because we've been fighting and leading. We fought and led and passed HR2, a border security bill. We fought and passed Limit Save Grow, which was actually a responsible way to approach the debt limit. We passed the National Defense Authorization Act that actually fixes all the woke garbage. But guess what? The unit party always wants to fight back. They want to win. It's like the Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars. And what are they doing? They're pushing back on the NDAA. The Senate just passed a garbage version of the NDAA, and I'm going to fight it. Now all the unit party specialists in Washington want to keep funding this radical government come September. I saw a headline five minutes ago, and it said, oh, we think Republicans, conservative hardliners in the Freedom Caucus, they want to shut down. This is just nonsense. What we want is to fight for something, fight for anything. That's my message to Republican leadership. Give me one GD thing you're willing to fight for, one. And I tell you what, we'll go try to climb the hill with you. But instead, don't play all these games with a uniparty specialist that empower Merrick Garland, now Henry Mayorkas, and Joe Biden to screw not just Trump, but the American people. So we're gonna get screwed again in September, aren't we, Chip? Well, I'm going to throw everything I've got in front of this train. Uh, rules committee, rules on the floor. I'm going to fight it with everything I've got. I am not going to vote for an appropriations bill. None. I'm not going to vote for a rule in committee. I'm not going to vote for a rule on the floor that funds Alejandro Mayorkas, that funds the Department of Homeland Security, not a continuing resolution, nothing, until we pass H.R. 2 signed by Biden into law. Mayorkas is gone, and Texas is paid back. Then come back to me and ask for permission to continue. And that would be to deal with the FBI, to deal with the Department of Justice, to deal with the Inflation Reduction Act. But why are we funding this garbage? The founders gave us the power of the purse. So Jesse, you're right to be cynical. We got rolled in Memorial Day on the debt ceiling deal, the $4 trillion deal that has us now with another trillion and a half dollars of debt since then. Every Republican who supported it should be ashamed. So now we got to fight in September. But don't give up, y'all. Like, let's keep the heat up. Republicans are feeling it. Let's head into the appropriation season and try to push them. Let's hope. All right, let's shift gears here to this Devin Archer thing. Here's a little clip I'm sure you've seen. I guess I'm pivoting against the lie that I'm hearing people tell with a straight face. Congressman Goldman, for example, that we don't really know what was going on. Really? You're taking a call from the vice president and you put it on speaker. It's not just, hey, dad, I'm in a meeting with some buddies. Right. It's, let me, let me put my dad, the vice president, on speaker. Yeah, yep. In the, in the rear view, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an abuse of soft power, I'd say. An abuse of soft power. Um, interesting. An abuse of soft power. Is anything going to happen with Joe Biden with all this stuff, Chip? Is he going to be impeached? Should he be impeached? What, what are we doing? Well, first of all, let's remember that the reason that Merrick Garland and that President Biden, by extension, put in place a special counsel, Jack Smith, was to hide behind him. That's why they did it. They have the adversarial relationship that is needed to take on this case. They didn't need a special counsel unless they wanted to hide behind the special counsel unless they wanted to, for example, continue to play games with this Hunter Biden plea deal, which was all a sham, all a fraud. We all see it before our eyes. Credit to Jamie Comer, credit to Jim Jordan for highlighting this in committee. That is part of our job, to expose it to the American people. But the rest of our job is to do something about it. Yes, we should pursue impeachment against this administration, make the case, lay it out, and show it to the American people. But don't just give me an impeachment inquiry and then futz around with it and walk away. Either make the case and go impeach the SOB or get on the business of the American people that we need to do to, for example, I don't know, secure the border, stop the fentanyl, stop the sex trafficking, stop China, stop inflation, do anything at all to do what we said we would do when we campaign. So look, I think we have the path forward in front of us to do what the American people expect us to do and defend the rule of law. But we've got to go make the case and do it. No more, you know, empty rhetoric. We've got to get the job done. Accountability. So important. So important. 
accountability, ownership. It's important for you. It's important for me. It's important that we force our Democrat voting friends and family, that we force them to look in the mirror and take accountability for what they do. Because this is a scene that's played out time and time again in this country. I know I get the emails you send me. This is what happens. Dad has always voted Democrat. Right? This is what he was a JFK Democrat. It's always voted Democrat. And he still does that out of tradition. Probably more of a Republican these days, but still votes Democrat out of tradition. Son is a Republican, and son goes to dad and shows him some tranny parade and says, Dad, look at this stuff. Look at this. This is, this is Democrat policies now. And he says, yeah, that's not what I voted for, though. He still thinks that he's voting for the same people he did and that he could just keep voting Democrat. You have to step in in that moment and tell dad that, no, 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 dad. You did vote for this. This is what you vote for every single time. You cast your vote for this. I see this in big cities all the time when it comes to things like homelessness and crime and illegal immigrants stacked up on the sidewalk like sardines. You see this video out of New York? See that? And I see so many New Yorkers out there right now, so many, lamenting the state of illegal immigrants Illegal immigration. Eric Adams is out there. My goodness, the sky must be falling. Eric Adams is out there calling to secure the border. We need to control the border. We need to call a state of emergency, and we need to properly fund this national crisis. But Eric Adams is a Democrat. New York's run by Democrats. New York declared itself to be a sanctuary city, and New Yorkers go to the polls every single election, and they vote Democrat every single time. So if you're in New York and you vote Democrat every time, you put those illegals on your sidewalk. You did this. You are the cause of the homeless problem. You're the reason New York City is a shooting gallery now. Here was Eric Adams' opponent in the last election, Curtis Lewa. This is an absolute mess. What a nightmare. And it goes all around the block, and they're lined upstairs, and they seem to go right on up into the top floor of the Roosevelt Hotel. Where's Eric Adams, swagger man with no plan? You think he should be here dealing with the mess he created? He wants a sanctuary city. He's got a sanctuary city. You voted for this, New Yorkers. And that actually, I, that, that reminds me. Yesterday when I was saying that, hey, this is, I'm happy for New York. This is how New York wants to live. They go vote for this every time. I actually had somebody respond, and I, on my life, I swear they said, yeah, except there's cheating in that election. Okay. Let's pause on this for just a brief moment. I've never been, I've never been one of these people who's denied that Democrats cheat in elections. I've talked, how many times have you heard me talk about that on the show? The dirty things they do. We know they cheat. That's why they don't want you to have to show ID. They cheat, they cheat, they cheat. But there's this infection on the right that has got to stop claiming every election that we lose was stolen. There are 3.1 million Democrats registered to vote in New York City, 477,000 Republicans. Eric Adams didn't steal the election from Curtis Slewa. More Democrats showed up and voted than Republicans. And the reason this bothers me is what this has become is an excuse. It's become an excuse. It's become cope. I don't need to go knock on do doors. They're going to steal the election. I don't need to donate money in time. It's going to be stolen. I don't want to run for school board. They're going to steal. It's going to be stolen. City council can't do that. They're just going to steal it. It's become the built-in excuse every time Republicans get too lazy or do something stupid. Do they cheat? Yeah. Are they going to keep cheating? Absolutely. Should we stop that? Do everything we can to stop it? No doubt about it. Every election that doesn't go our way is not stolen. Enough with that nonsense, all right? But hey, look, one more little you voted for this. 
Here's Chicago. Oh, you're not aware of some of these large gatherings? You're talking about the mob elections? Yeah. No, that's, 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 that's not appropriate. We're not talking about mob actions. I didn't say that. It's important that we speak of these dynamics in an appropriate way. This is not to obfuscate what is actually taking place. But we have to be very careful when we use language to describe certain behavior. There's history in this city. I mean, to refer to children as like baby Al Capones is not appropriate. That's his response to the mobs that are taking over Chicago. But again, Chicago just had an election. There was even a more moderate Democrat on the ballot. They went out, people in Chicago, and they voted for the communists. So Chicago, you voted for this. All right, We've got culture war stuff. We've got a culture war panel coming up next. Before we get to the culture war panel, let's get to Taking some steps to prepare. Prepare for what? I don't know. I know that when your credit rating is getting downgraded and you're piling on $1.8 trillion in new debt in eight weeks, you might just be at the whole snowball phase of the debt financial crisis. I would have some gold or silver coins in my physical possession if I was you. I would have gold or silver woven into my IRA or 401k to make sure my retirement doesn't get completely destroyed. And Oxford Gold not only handles all that for you, they are so laid back with it. It's just, they're just wonderful to work with. All you have to do is make a phone call, one phone call, 833-995-GOLD. Tell them I told you to call, all right? 833-995-GOLD. We'll be back. Language and lies. The communist uses them very, very well. You see, his plans are all horrible. They're murderous and destructive, and they'll make your life miserable, if not end your life. That's how communists are. And they, they know that, and they don't want you to know that. So they try to make everything sound so much different than it really is. Washington Post ran a headline today that said, an abortion ban made them teen parents. Huh. That's an interesting way to frame that. Joining me now, my buddy Terry Schilling of the American, American Principles Project and Sean Carney, President 40 Days of Life. Terry, an abortion ban made those poor kids' parents, bud. Heaven forbid uh, that these uh, poor kids be given the greatest gift of all time, uh, which is their children, right? These are what's really unfortunate, right, is we are flushing these, these pieces of gold. No, they're more valuable than gold. We're flushing them down the toilet. We're sucking them up in their brains and their body parts with vacuums, and we're just discarding it. I don't discard my kids' half-eaten cheeseburgers, Jesse, um, and so we definitely shouldn't do that with our own flesh and blood. These are the same same people um, that we're that we're producing our children they're gonna be around our bedside uh, when we're dying they're gonna be the ones holding our hand and the idea that we would eliminate any of them is just so horrific and we should be ashamed of ourselves for ever allowing this to happen Sean along those same lines one of the things I, I, I can't believe is every time I read one of these new polls showing how few fewer and fewer frankly young people young couples people in their 20s 30s want children. They just don't want them at all. And I'm not saying everyone has to have children. People live their own lives. But have we so poisoned parenthood in this country that people think being a parent sucks? Yes. And the goal of the left, <clears throat> very scary goal, is to alleviate suffering. And we should never trust the person that says they're going to alleviate all of our suffering. And there is suffering with parenting. But these are our kids. <laughs> We're supposed to sacrifice. This was the most bizarre and awkward article. At first I thought it was the Babylon Bee, but it was the Washington Post. These people are all over the map. They, they are, I guess, frustrated that there was an abortion ban, and now they have these two beautiful little girls, by the way. Um, and they're saying, we couldn't live without them. I love being a dad. I love being a mom. It's great. Oh, wait, one of them's crying. Oh, I have to clean up their lunch. And the reason people don't want kids is because so many people in our nation for a number of decades ha have made having children somehow this horrible burden and also 
they have attacked women, they've attacked motherhood, and somehow have convinced people that it's not heroic to make your kids lunch and to clean it up or to take care of them when they're sick or to clean up the bathroom when it's a total mess. That's part of parenting, and it's heroic. To, to make it more about the election here for Terry, Terry, I, I saw an article actually this morning and they were going over who votes which way in this country. Married men, overwhelmingly Republican. Married women, overwhelmingly Republican. Single men, Republican. But single women, the, the numbers, it was almost 40 points if I remember right. Single women are the beating heart of the Democrat Party. And call me a cynic, Terry, but I can't help but think those two things are connected, that this society knows married, happy people will vote the way that this society doesn't want them to go, so they tell them all, stay single, childless, and miserable. This was always the plan, Jesse, and we we took it uh, hook, line, and sinker. This was the plan. They wanted it, the, the country to shift more democratically. That's why they eased up all of the laws and rules around marriage and family and procreation. They made it really difficult to afford a family because they know that once you get married, you're no longer focused only on yourself. You're focused on someone else for once in your life. And then when you fast forward to having a baby for the first time, there's a real biological drive that forces you to think about other people uh, and take care of them. Listen, the, the single women that are driving the Democratic Party, they're all miserable. And I'm not just saying that, and that's just not speculation. That's in poll after poll after poll. And it's also in the big pharma numbers, right? You look at you look at the, the primary customers for big pharmaceutical drugs like anti-anxiety, Anxiety medications, antidepressants, it's all the single women in this country that are primarily driving that. They're very unhappy and they're voting unhappily. Oh, well, the religion of the malcontent, that's what communism is. Sean, Christian teen arrested for reading Bible verses in Wisconsin. Here's a video. But through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What is the problem? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? You didn't give him any warning. You just grabbed the mic. No, this is the same one that we had in here. Yeah, that was in there. It was not out here. What is wrong with you? What are you doing? You didn't give us any warning. Let it go. You guys have been warned. They say we can have. We can, they say we can speak out here on the sidewalk freely. You can speak, but there's no way to fight. Nobody told us that. What are you doing? Nobody told me that. That's what I'm talking about. This is, well, how come there's no amplification? Hey, you guys are acting like hey, thugs, man. You're acting like straight, you straight up thugs. Hey, you're, you're, you're taking away my property. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. There's cars driving by with their radio. Sean in Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah. What happened to the Packers and hunting in the fall? Um, we're fighting this at 40 Days for Life. We have to fight for free speech every day. Uh, we get one to two inquiries per week at our locations where we peacefully pray outside of abortion facilities. We get inquiries from the FBI, from local law enforcement. They've absolutely lost their mind after Roe v. Wade, along with obviously the Washington Post from that previous story. And this is shameful. I mean, these are kids, young, innocent kids. And Wisconsin has a huge drug problem. Like they're arresting this nice kid with a cross on his arm and, and, and telling me he has no free speech. It's absolutely absurd, but it's part of the silencing uh, of those who we disagree with. And the left does not want public discourse. They don't want dialogue. They don't want uh, debate. They want to silence those who disagree with them and they want to do so uh, forcefully. This is an absolutely just disgraceful and shocking display. These these kids are, are out there praying and the cop just comes up and, and takes the mic out. Look, I've been at thousands of public events for, for the pro-life movement across the country. We know all about sound permits and what you can use and not use. That is absurd. I mean, that is insane. I have never had uh, any kind of cop, even a pro-abortion cop, approach me like that and say, I'm just gonna take your microphone. Uh, this is why, you know, we're fighting it in the courts. We're suing Westchester County for their buffer zone. We're going to win that case uh, right now. Uh, but we're suing across the country because if we don't use our free speech, we'll lose it. I think the Wisconsin story, I think that's good. That footage is good and it'll end up backfiring. Yeah, it probably is.
Terry, here's a doozy for you. Speaking of poll numbers, there's now a 292% increase in students claiming to be disabled. So everyone wants to be left-handed now? What's going on here, Terry? <laughs> no, look, we all have to uh, identify as some type of minority today in order to be protected, right? We have developed uh, America into a nation that is completely balkanized into all these different protected classes, and the hierarchy is based on how, quote, disadvantaged you are as a population. And so, look, the, 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 you're going to continue to see more and more of this because Americans aren't identifying as what they truly are, which is as Americans, which is as children of God, which is as mothers and fathers. Those are all boring things to everyone. They need the disadvantaged populations. They need something unique about themselves because they really don't have an identity. So instead, they're latching on to every other uh, group that's protected and elevated in our society by all of our cultural institutions in the media and in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, I I think, you know, this could, I could be wrong, but this could just be uh, the media actually fact-checking and figuring out that they aren't actually disabled, but they're counting Democrat voters as disabled. There's a rise in, in young people voting Democratic, so maybe that's what they're talking about. Well, that's a fair classification. Terry, Sean, thank you, fellas. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Jesse. All right. Got light in the mood coming up. Let's do something. You know that your house has a unique odor to it. Everyone, everyone's home does. And that part's okay, but when you dig into the why, it gets less okay. You see what you cook soaks into the walls, the floors. You have odors. Your pets have odors. If you have teenage sons like I do, you definitely have odors in your home. Eden Pure Thunderstorm will clean your air. Not cover up the odors like some weird oil thing. It will scrub your air for you like nature does after a thunderstorm. It's this little black box. It goes right in the wall. They sell three packs of them, $200 off for my viewers. Go enjoy these little miracles. EdenPureDeals.com, code JESSE. All right? EdenPureDeals.com, code JESSE. We'll be back. All right, it is time to lighten the mood. And I've always been such a huge fan of athletic accomplishment, right? I, I, I just admire it when you have a gift and then you combine that with hard work and you can go out there and you can play basketball, you can play football, you can do athletic things that other people, normal people like me can't do. I've always been just a big fan of that. And, and track's really one of those ones when you when you sit down and you watch some of these sprinters perform, it's jaw-dropping. You see this race? You see this lady from Somalia? Twenty-one seconds, twenty-one point eight one seconds, just ten seconds behind the other people. The best is how she does, like the like the prayer thing at the end. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow.